Today I'm just chilling in my hammock in my uh, food forest in the backyard and I wanted to share some thoughts with you that came up with a conversation I was having with Owen Benjamin on his uh, live stream. And it's something I've been thinking a lot about, but sometimes when I have conversations with people, they, the words come out in a way that I haven't been able to articulate them before. And this is regarding something that I think a lot of people, especially financial gurus, are missing on the big picture. So I've been following a lot of these guys for a long time and uh, guys like Mike Maloney and, and Gerald Salente, uh, Jeff Berwick, Doug Casey, and I respect all of these men very much. And what I'm going to say is not so much in a disagreement with them. It's basically something that I think should be added to the conversation. And so I'm going to add it because I know it's what I'm going to talk about isn't necessarily in their wheelhouse so much as it is mine. And it's basically what these guys are all missing if shit hits the fan. And so if we're talking about a collapse in some way or another and I think we're we're seeing it now we're, we're in the beginning stages of it and it's going to continue and grow and go to places that that even I c can't imagine right now and I have no idea what we're totally in for but a lot of what these these gentlemen talk about and I agree with them 100% is the idea of sound money and how do you protect your assets because so much of, of what people use on a day-to-day -day basis is, is guaranteed by the government, whether that be in the U.S. a 401k or in Canada an RRSP, some kind of savings in the bank, uh, fiat money and all that. And these guys are all big pro uh, supporters of sound money, pr primarily and historically things like precious metals um, and or other types of hard assets. And now a lot more things like cryptocurrency and uh, Bitcoin and Litecoin and Ethereum and, and all that kind of stuff. And I'm, I'm all for all of those things. But a big thing that a lot of these guys are missing out on is that money, no matter what the money is, is only worth what somebody's willing to exchange for it. And if, if I think about where things are going in terms of economic collapse, political collapse, societal collapse, cultural collapse, who knows where we could go, intellectual collapse. In a way, a lot of these things actually align up with uh, the eight forms of capital, which is going to lead me to where the other part of uh, this that I'm talking about. So a lot of these guys say, you know, protect your assets, get into hard metals and all that, hard assets and, and, and precious metals and cryptocurrency and all that. But if things really hit the fan, how valuable is any of that? And let me give you a scenario which I've thought about in which um, I would way rather take something else than a bag of gold. So let's say we are in some sort of post-apocalyptic scenario and uh, it's, it's scarcity, you know, there's no food in the grocery stores, energy grids down in many parts, political system has collapsed. Um, police departments have been defunded, we have a lot of chaos in the streets, and uh, what the smart people are going to do is they're going to hunker down and they're going to form their own communities in some way or another. They're going to come together and protect one another, they're going to grow their own food, and they're going to try to be um, as insulated as possible for to protect themselves from the outside world. So they got to have their food systems, their water systems, their energy systems and their shelter. They got to have those four things. There's there's lots of other things you can go with there, but they got to have those four primary things. And when all the people are trying to get out of the city at once and you know it's like it's like right now there's sort of a train driving to the edge of a cliff and a lot of people are sitting there going yeah, I I'm pretty sure it'll stop. I'm pretty sure the the the, uh, the conductor will will stop the train before it goes to the end. That's probably 90% of people. Maybe there's a smaller percentage, and then they're going, yeah, I don't think it will. Maybe we should start thinking about something else. And then there's a smaller percentage from there, which is maybe one percent or less, which are already prepared and have been doing so for a long time. They saw this coming a long time ago. And so, when that train when that train comes to the edge, everybody's going to try to jump off at once. And that's what I think is going to happen in that 
it won't be until the last minute where the vast majority of people try to get out of the cities at once. Um, they try, you know, they'll, they'll wait until there's no food at the grocery store until they start to do something. And the first thing that most people will probably do is go to the bread line that the government has provided. And um, by that time, it's too late. And so you're going to see these mass exoduses from the city. And people are going to be trying to get the hell out and they're going to be spreading around the nearby farms and communities and all that to try to find resources. And, 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 and one can only imagine how bad that could get. Uh, hopefully it, it doesn't. But um, when it comes to that kind of scenario and there's a lot of desperate people running around, you know, everybody runs out of gas at the same time because everybody gets in their car to leave the city at the same time they all get on the freeway and they all run out of gas at the same place more or less and there's no gas at the gas station because it wasn't refilled and so then they start get out of their vehicles and they start to spread around from there and so they're hidden to the hills and they and they start to go and knock on doors right so they find little off-grid communities communities here and there and hopefully they result to reasonable uh, behavior before they res result to violence but people are going to come and knock on doors and say hey you know, you got room for any more. And the scenario I imagine is where you got two people that show up on your door. And let's say I've only got room for one. So I'm here on my little fiefdom. I got my farm. We got our little energy grid. We got, you know, we got our own little sewage system happening, compost, toilets. We're, we're generating our own power, we're growing our food. We got little homes and stuff for people to live in. Whatever. Use your imagination nice little happen in place but we're struggling right it's a struggle as the whole system around us collapses it's not easy to live this way it's very difficult and so i've got two guys that come to the door and they say one guy's got a bag of gold right he's got a, he's got 20 ounces of gold that he's willing to give to be able to be welcomed into our community and i got another guy there who is doesn't have any money but he showed up in a little tractor you know, he showed up in a little beat up Ford tractor and uh, he's got no money, but he's got a lot of skills because he fixed that tractor in order to get there. And he has been living on, he's been farming for a long time. He's got some skills that are usable. You know, he can, he can do some basic framing uh, for home construction. He can do some basic wiring for electrical and, and yada, yada, yada. Most farmers have a very broad section of, of general skills. Whereas this other guy, all he's got is money and and forget the personalities of both of them if i just look at what they bring to the table the guy with the gold okay sure i get some gold but what do i do with that right now if we're in a collapse and there's no food at the stores period so it doesn't matter how much money you show up to the store with there's no food right uh the hardware store is all out of stuff because the trucks aren't coming in and um so no amount of money is going to buy you anything so why do I need 20 ounces of gold when the guy who just showed up has skills and abilities that can be used now? So this guy can show up and he can immediately provide value on the farm or in the community. This guy can generate 10 to 100 times more than he consumes. So he has intrinsic value right now. This comes back to a, a video I did a while, uh, not too long ago, maybe if maybe a month or two ago, maybe a bit more on YouTube about um, when things get bad, all that matters are three things. What you got in your head, what you can do with your hands, and what's in your heart. Because you can take a man's assets away. You can take a man's wealth, uh, his equipment, you can rob him of everything. But as long as he can still walk and use his body, he can make things happen with his hand. He's got skills and experience that he's learned that are in his head. And if he's a man or woman uh, worth anything, that they've got amount, a good amount of compassion in their heart, that kind of person is usable. That kind of person will make things happen. And so this is, where I th this is why I think a lot of these financial gurus are missing the big picture. And I know a lot of them uh, have to promote the things that they're selling. So perhaps, perhaps what I'm saying is that I'm just missing the big picture with what some of these guys say and, and that's okay I think what I want to do is try to just contribute to the conversation and 
offer something that is being missed in the cultural zeitgeist. And what I'd like to draw you to, or, or, or direct you towards is the eight forms of capital. I've done a video about this on YouTube in the past. I'll link to it in the in the notes here or in the um, it'll pop up on the screen. And I didn't make these up, but there are eight forms of capital, and financial capital is only one of them. So social capital, intellectual capital, cultural capital, material capital, resource capital, or living capital, these are all things that are equally as valuable, if not more valuable when times get tough. Because you can have all of your financial ducks in a row, and you might have lots of money in crypto, and you might have lots of money in precious metals and all that, but at the end of the day, if I have to pick a team to work with me when times get tough, I don't really care about money. Because when times get really tough, no amount of money is going to buy you anything. You have to be able to show up with value. And if you can't show up with value, you've got nothing to the table. And that's an unfortunate reality. So I hope people um, take that to heart and start doing something about it. Because you don't have to have any one of these things. What's important is you have some of these things and that you know how to offer value. So you might not be an experienced farmer, that's okay. What you should be doing right now is you should be learning about that and you should be getting engaged in it. Watching YouTube videos is not enough. You should be learning about all these things and engaging in community to help get you there because one thing happens when you start learning about say, growing your own food, producing your own energy, building your own alternative shelter, um, uh, harvesting rainwater, whatever those f really important things are that we need to, to live on this planet, is by going and getting engaged and whether it's taking a workshop or starting to grow your own food, getting your house off grid or whatever it is. It doesn't have to be all those things. It doesn't have to be any one particular, but you get involved. You start to meet people along the way. It's what I found early on in my in my journey to get into farming and, and, and living off the grid and homesteading and all this stuff is I just met really cool people that were switched on. And those people are sometimes way ahead of you and they can be your mentor. They're at your level so they can be your peer or they're behind you and then you can be their mentor. And the important thing is that you have those people around you because that is 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 fundamentally a big part of what community is. And community is what's really important with all this stuff. Because if you don't already have some of that, you're really just leveraging the things that you can provide. Like I said, with you, with what's in your hands, what's in your head, and what's in your heart. And there might not be room, right? I mean, it doesn't matter how skilled you are. If you're not already getting the ball in motion with these things, you do not want to be with the rest of the hordes that are trying to solve a problem right now. Like I'm telling you, I literally have friends right now, close friends that right at this moment are still saying, eh, we'll see what happens. Like, okay, whatever. <laughs> Don't come knocking on my door when the shit hits the fan. And I hope I'm wrong. And I'm not putting this out because I want people to be fearful. I do not want you to be fearful. I want you to be empowered. I want you to realize that you are a creator and that you can create magnificent things if you put your mind and your intentions and your abilities forward and make them happen. And right now is a great time to do that. But I literally have people in my close friend circles that still think this is all just, oh, this will all blow over. Okay, whatever, that's fine. Um, I'm just telling you, um, and I, I'm sure a lot of people are listening to this and they're going through the same thing and that you're that a lot of your friends think you're nuts for talking about this stuff. Oh, masks. Yeah, just wear the mask. Big deal. Oh, you know, all the government's lock and step doing the same thing. Oh, big deal. Oh, all the all the oligarchs saying things like the Great Reset. Oh, uh, yeah, it's just all it's all coincidence, right? It's all just coincidence. Yeah. OK, whatever, man. <laughs> I, uh, I don't know what to say to those people anymore, but uh, all basically that I will not have room for you when things get bad, because if you're not acting now, 
there's no way you're going to be able to catch up when the things get nasty. If you're not putting things in motion right now to prepare yourself, I'm sorry. But um, in tough times, human resources is in uh, human capital is almost a better way of putting it. The collective abilities and skills of, of a group of people is far more valuable than any amount of money. So if you're just hoping that you can get all your money out of your 401k, your RSP, and get it into cryptocurrency and make sure you're stacking lots of precious metals and that's your plan, or even what uh, Gerald Salente, who I, I do admire very much, but he often says it's the, free, the three G's, guns, gold, and a getaway plan. That's bullshit, Gerald. I'm sorry, man. That's not enough. Because if that's all you've got is guns, gold, and a getaway plan, first of all, let's break it down. The getaway plan, where are you going to go? you got to have somewhere to go. If you don't have somewhere to go, I don't know where you're talking about. So maybe Gerald has his own off-grid homestead that he's tucked away. I've never heard him talk about those things, but maybe he does. If he doesn't, and you're just one of these people who has the guns, gold, and getaway plan, because I've heard this prepper strategy many times before, where you basically, okay, I got a motorbike and a couple rifles, and I'm just going to get on my bike, and I'm just going to get out. Okay, where are you going to go? And what are you going to do? Are you is, are you going to play the the robber baron, and you're going to run around and try to rob people and steal from people? This isn't Hollywood, man. That doesn't last long. You go around screwing people over in tough times, the the threshold for tolerance is a lot less you screw people over once you probably won't have a second chance again so i don't i don't know about the guns uh if you don't have a getaway plan i don't know where you're going or if you're it, what your getaway plan is and gold like i said what good is gold if you can't spend it what good is anything like if times are tough people won't even sell their food like if times get really, really bad, and if, and some farmers had to defend his farmer his farm off from marauding, marauding gangs for the last year, and all he's got for food is the stuff that he's able to keep within his, his own personal root cellar, or that he's got under lock and key, armed to the teeth, protecting it. Uh, he's not going to sell you any food, so no amount of gold makes any difference. So I think, this whole plan of that is is bullshit i i would counter this idea of guns gold and a getaway plan i i don't know if i could on I, i'm just gonna i'm just thinking about this on the fly i don't know if i could make it sound as sexy as gerald salente did there but you gotta have community you gotta have people around you that have your back no matter what you gotta have skills that have intrinsic value you got to be able to do something with those skills and it's got it's most likely going to be they've got to be skills that are involved into the basic four pillars of 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 um, human beings living on this planet which is food water shelter and energy so if you don't have skills that can be relevant to those i don't know what the hell you're going to do and um I mean, then I guess at the end of the day too, you got to be a really nice guy. You got to be somebody that people want around. So if you don't have skills and you're not somebody that people want around and you don't have a community, what the hell are you going to do? Th this whole idea of being a lone wolf and running off into the hills with guns, gold, and a getaway plan isn't going to do anything for you. I don't know where these guys think that... Uh, this is all that great. I, I, having said that, I will say, I do know Doug Casey has an amazing farm that he lives on in, I believe it's in um, Uruguay. So Doug's kind of got it sorted out. You know, Doug's talking about sound money and, and uh, he's the author of The International Man. Uh, he's doing that. Uh, Jeff Berwick, I love Jeff Berwick. But uh, I see Jeff, I watch his videos on YouTube, I watch his walk and talks, they're hilarious. My wife and I watch them most mornings actually. Um, but I see Jeff, you know, he's got his stuff sorted out with money, but he's driving around in an RV in Mexico. And yes, Mexico is definitely more poised as a country to handle collapse because it's already mostly collapsed and has been for a long time. But if things are so scarce and nobody wants to sell you anything, I don't know what you're going to do with all that money. So I hope that gives you guys some food for thought. It's something that came up um, that I've been wanting to articulate for a while. But check out the eight forms of capital. 
and and uh, I'll leave a link to it in the video here. Um, you can also check out the video that I did about the three things that all you really have if the shit hits the fan. I'm spending a lot of time thinking about these this stuff this, these days because I see the news cycle is continuously escalating, and um, I don't think we're going to have a moment where it's psh, shit hits the fan right then and there. But I think we are in a consistent downward spiral down a toilet bowl right now. And the events are going to get more extreme and more frequent. And um, we're in it. This is it. So let's enjoy the ride. Let's make sure that we're set up and we've got people around us that uh, can provide value. And, and I hope you're not one of those guys that's waiting for the last minute to do something about it. And that your plan isn't to go knock on Curtis's door or somebody else's door in, that's in your community. Uh, that they're going to have some kind of solution for you because they won't. I would say if you're trying to find a way to add value to uh, leaders in a community who probably have some resources and skills that can make things happen. I would just get the ball rolling to make it happen for yourself. Don't depend on um, somebody else being the the guiding light for you. If you if you can become somewhat of a guiding light, then you will find other guiding lights. And it's like the old cliche: if you build it, they will come. So start putting down. So start making things happen right now, and you will find community community will find you and you will also learn how to be better how to grow food better how to live off grid better how to harvest rainwater into the landscape better just by getting involved in these things now it's going to do a massive amount of value for you going forward because you're not going to be able to learn it all at once no amount of videos on YouTube that you've watched is going to mean anything until you've actually started practicing. You have to practice. You can't just watch these things and then hope that y y they'll all work out when the shit hits the fan and you, and you think you have some skills that are going to make things happen. Watching YouTube videos alone isn't going to do it. You have to get in practice. You have to get your hands uh, dirty and get, get your feet wet. You've got to get in there and do the work. And that's really what it all comes down to. So hope that provided some value for you guys and I will see you in the next video.